Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions on waves and electricity from March 2023, paper 2, variant 2. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of these topics and also you can have better understanding of these questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. For question number 5, part A, we need to find out time-based setting in seconds per centimeter of the sea hour. Time-based setting simply is equal to time-based setting. Time-based setting. This is equal to total time divided by length of the wave. So we can say time in seconds divided by length of the wave in centimeters. Now, if you look at this given wave, in this case, you can see we have one complete wave. So this is one complete wave. And also we have half wave. So in this case, we have 1.5 waves. 1.5 waves. So in this case, total time will be equal to 1.5 times time period of the wave divided by length in this case if we look at given scale we have this is one centimeter here we have two centimeters and we have three centimeters we have four centimeters and here we have five centimeters and we have six centimeters so simply we need to divide this one by six this time is in seconds and this is in centimeters. Now we need to find out time period. Frequency is given to us. So we can say time period is equal to one over frequency. And frequency is one over 5,000. So we have one over 5,000. If we solve this one, in this case, we will get answer 2.0 times 10 to minus four seconds. So this is value of time period. Now simply we need to plug in here. So we have 1.5 and value of time period is 2.0 times 10 to minus 4 seconds divided by length of the wave that is 6 centimeters. Now if we solve we can get the final answer. Final answer will be equal to 5.0 times 10 to minus 5 seconds per centimeters. So our answer is 5.0 times 10 to minus 5 seconds per centimeter. So this is our final answer. For the second part, it is given to us the intensity of the sound detected by the microphone is now increased from its initial value of I to a new value of theory I. The frequency of the sound is unchanged. Assume that amplitude of the trace on the CR screen is proportional to the amplitude of the sound wave. On figure 5.1, we need to sketch a new trace shown on the screen of the CRO. So in this case, intensity has been increased. Intensity has been increased from I to 3I. So this is we can write down. Now simply we need to find out how A has been changed from A to some new value of amplitude. But we understand intensity over amplitude square this is constant means the ratio between i and a square this remains constant so this is a new square we have value of uh, a initial that is equal to one centimeter so this is one centimeter so simply we can write down here this is one centimeter square so we have three i this is divided by a new square so we can cancel this i with this i so we got a new this one will be equal to root of theory times one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter. So this is value of A nu. So simply we can say from here, A nu, this is equal to one point. Now simply we have to consider new value of amplitude and we can sketch new trace. So the amplitude of new trace is equal to 1.73 centimeters and we need to use this amplitude and we can sketch the new trace. 1.73, so 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, so here will be 1.7. 1 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, 1.7. So here 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, so 1.7. Now simply we need to connect these points. So this is how you can sketch the curve. So little bit better we can draw this one. Can draw a little bit better. 
this part. So we can simply connect from it. So this is how you need to draw the new trace. An amplitude of new trace has to be equal to 1.73 centimeters. For part B, it is given to us an arrangement for demonstrating interference pattern using light is shown in figure 5.2. And for part B1, we need to explain why a bright ring is produced by the waves meeting at point P. So at this point, why a bright fringe is produced. A bright fringe at this point is produced due to constructive interference between two waves reaching at this point. So simply if you look at these two waves reaching at this point, these two waves will be in phase. So in this case, we have two waves here. Uh, these two waves are in phase. When they will meet, they will produce a super crest due to constructive interference because they have phase difference equal to zero. So simply you have to say in this case, phase difference is equal to zero. So there is constructive interference and a bright ring is formed at one P. So for the answer of this question, simply you can say phase difference between waves at P is zero. So constructive interference and a bright fringe is produced at this point. You can also say this one in terms of path difference. Path difference, you can also say path difference in this case is also equal to zero. So that's the reason there is a right fringe. For the second part, we need to calculate the distance capital D, means the distance between the slits and the screen. And this is about Young's double slit. For Young's double slit, you need to understand that AX is equal to lambda times D. And we need to find out D in this case. So D will be equal to AX divided by lambda. And value of A is given to us. This is slit separation. So simply we can write down this is 3.6 times 10 to minus 4 and also we have fringe separation is given to us fringe spacing axis fringe spacing value of fringe spacing is also given in the distance between two consecutive bright fringes that is equal to 4.0 times 10 to minus 3 and the value of lambda is given so this is value of lambda. We have 630 nanometers, 10 to minus 9. Now, if we solve this one, value of D will be equal to 2.3 meters. So this is what you need to calculate. So this is value of D. Pretty straightforward question if you understand Young's Devil's Lake equation. For part C on figure 5.3, we need to sketch a graph to show the variation of X with lambda from lambda equal to 400 nanometers to lambda equal to 700 nanometers numerical values of x are not required so for this one we need to understand that ax is equal to lambda times d for double slit we are talking about double slit experiment so from here we can say x is equal to lambda times capital d divided by a question is asking us to sketch a graph between x and lambda so from here we can see that x is directly proportional to lambda and so these two quantities they are directly proportional to each other so it means that we need to sketch a straight line so simply we have to sketch a straight line but this straight line should not start from zero because at this point lambda is not equal to zero so it cannot start from the zero it has to be straight line because these two quantities they are directly proportional but it should not start from zero because lambda is not equal to zero at this point if it was zero lambda zero x zero then we can start from zero so this is how you need to sketch for question number six part a we need to define potential difference across a component and pd across a component potential difference across a component simply is equal to the amount of electrical energy amount of electrical energy converted into other forms of energy per unit charge electric energy into other forms of energy other forms of energy per unit charge amount of energy per unit 
charge. So this is how you can define potential difference across a component. Amount of electric energy converted into other forms of energy per unit charge. So this is how we define potential difference across a component. Let me show you the answer how you can write down the answer. So this is how simply you can write down the answer. You can say energy transferred from electrical to other forms per unit charge. If you write on this one, you will get one mark. And this is B mark. For part D, it is given to us the variation with potential difference V of the current in a semiconductor diode is shown in figure 6.1. Use figure 6.1 to describe qualitatively. The resistance of the diode in the range from V is equal to 0 to V is equal to 0.25 volts. 0 to 0.25 means until this point 0.25 so in this case current is equal to 0 so simply we can say resistance is equal to V divided by I as value of V is 0.25 volts and current is equal to 0 so it simply means that resistance in this range is infinite so simply we can say resistance is infinite resistance is infinite infinite for the second part the variation if any in the resistance of the diode as v changes from v is equal to 0.75 volts to v is equal to 1.0 volts so in this case we have first of all 0.75 this will be located here 0.75 so we can say this is 0.75. Now, in this case, we can simply compare. We can draw one line from here. So we can draw the line here. So this is the line. We can draw the line here. And also we can see in this case the increase. So we can see the increase here. So simply we can see the increase here. So in this case, if you look at the increment, this increases by two small square. So we have one small square and other small square. We can also compare this one with the final value here. So we can draw the line here and also we can draw this dotted line here and we can see this change. So in this case, this is increases by from here. So we have one small square, we have two small square, we have three small square and we have four. So in this case, R is equal to V divided by I. So for the same increase in V, as I is increasing more, it means the resistance is decreasing between 0.75 and 1.0. So simply we can say R decreases as V increases. As V increases. So just one mark. If you write on this one, you will get one mark. One mark for this one. So this will be B mark. And this is also B mark. Means current is increasing more for the same change in V. So it means resistance is increasing. For part C, it is given to us the fixed resistor has a resistance of 5 ohms. Current in the battery is 2.7 amps. Then current in the fixed resistor is 1.5 amps. Calculate the current in the resistance wire. So this one is the resistance wire. So this is over resistance wire. Question is asking us to calculate value of current in resistance wire. So simply we can say, let's say current in resistance wire is equal to I1. And current in this fixed resistor, this current is I2. And we can also assume current coming from the battery. Let's say that one is equal to I now. So at this junction, if we simply look at this junction, so we can simply say in this case, I naught has to be equal to I1 plus I2. I naught is equal to 2.7. I1 we need to find out and I2 is 1.5. So I1 from here simply will be equal to 1.2 amps. So this is how simply we can figure out. So the value of I1 is equal to 1.2. For the second part, we need to determine the resistance of variable resistor. So the best way to answer this question is simply we can connect a voltmeter across these two resistors. So this is over voltmeter. And this is connected across these two resistors. And the reading of this voltmeter has to be equal to the EMF of power supply because power supply has no internal resistance so this one has to be equal to 12 volts so we can say in this case the pd across these two resistors has to be equal to pd across 
fixed resistor plus PD across variable resistor. And current in these two resistors is the same because they're connected in series. So simply we have to multiply this one by capital R. Now if we solve this one for capital R, our final answer will be equal to 3.0 ohms. So this is what we need to calculate for this question. So simply our answer is 3.0. Very straightforward question. For the third part, it is given to us wire XY has a length of 2.0 meters. Point Z on the wire is a distance of 1.6 meters from point X. The fixed resistor is connected to the variable resistor at point W. We need to find the potential difference between points W and C. A conceptual question, a beautiful question to understand and to improve your conceptual understanding of electricity. The question is simply asking us to find the potential difference between these two points. It simply means if you connect your voltmeter between these two points, the question is asking you what is the reading on this voltmeter. And reading on this voltmeter, we can simply find out if we have the value of potential at point W and we have value of potential at point C. To find value of potential at point W, we can simply connect a voltmeter across this variable resistor. If we connect a voltmeter across this variable resistor, we can find out value of potential difference across this one because we have value of current that is equal to 1.5 amps and the resistance of this resistor we have just calculated that was equal to 3.0 ohms so we can find out the reading on this voltmeter that will be equal to 1.5 times 3.0 so we will get 4.5 volts and in this case this side is at 0 volt so this side will be at 4.5 because the potential difference between these two is equal to 4. 5. So simply we can say this is value of VW. So we can write on here. We have potential at point W that is equal to 4.5 volts. Now we need to find out the potential at this point. So we can also connect a voltmeter between C and between Y. So we have to find the reading on this point. In order to find reading on this voltmeter, first of all, we need to understand resistance. R is equal to rho L pi A. For uniform wire, for uniform, for uniform wire, very important point for potentiometer. For uniform wire, R is directly proportional to L, the length of the wire. Because resistivity of same wire is constant, and if cross-sectional area is also constant, then resistance is simply directly proportional to L. So we will be using this principle and we will try to find out reading on this voltmeter. So in this case, simply we can say, as this is the same wire, so current in this wire is the same. So we can say current W Y. We are taking the whole wire. That current is equal to current passing through C Y. So we can say C Y. Current is equal to the potential difference across this wire. So we can say PD is W y divided by l w l w z so this one is l w y yes we are talking about whole y l w y so we have i z y so the potential difference across z y divided by the length of z y z y part of the y potential difference we have in this case across this total wire that is equal to 12 so we can say this is equal to 12 and the length of the wire x y we have that is equal to 2.0 meters so v z y we need to find out and the length of this part we have that is equal to 2 minus 1.6 so we have this is 0.4 so we have simply 0.4 because point Z on the wire is a distance of 1.6 from point X. I mean this distance is equal to 1.6 meters. So this distance will be 0.4 meters. Uh, from here we can find out value of Z Y. Then this one will be equal to 12 multiplied by 0.4 divided by 2.0. So if we solve this one, we can find out the value of potential across this part of the wire. So in this case, we can simply cancel this two with this. So we will get six. And now simply we need to multiply six with 0.4. So if we multiply six with 0.4, we will get, this will be 2.4. 4 volts. So this is 24 2.4 volts. So we have value of Zy, potential difference between Z and Y. So in this case, this side is also at zero potential. 
so this side has to be at 2.4 volts and now we need to find the difference between these two so we can say the difference between point z and w this will be equal to the potential at point w minus the potential at point z potential at w we have that is equal to 4.5 and potential at z we have that is equal to 2.4 so we will get final answer in this case 2.1 volts so this is the potential difference between point W and point C. So the answer is 2.1 volts. So this is how you can figure out a beautiful question. You need to understand how to answer in a systematic way so you can improve your understanding of this. I hope this one is clear to you. If you have any questions about this one, you can leave your questions in comments. For part four, it is given to us the resistance of the variable resistor is now increased. By considering the currents in every part of the circuit, state and experiment whether the total power produced by the battery decreases, increases or stays the same. So total power produced by the battery. So power of the battery. So we can start from this one. Power of the battery is equal to I total in the circuit times EMF of the power supply. So we can say EMF of the power supply. So this is power of the battery. EMF of the battery stays same. Now simply we need to look at total current in the circuit. If we increase the resistance of this variable resistor, so it means that current in this branch has to decrease because the PD of this branch remains the same. So if we connect what meter here, PD remains constant, but resistance of this branch has increased. It means current in this branch has to go down. So current will be lower than 1.5 amps. So current has to decrease here. But PD across this wire remains the same. And the resistance of this wire also remains the same. Resistance also remains the same. So it means current in this part of the wire also remains the same. So it simply means that total current coming from the battery this one has to decrease because current in this branch has been decreased so total current coming from the battery has been decreased so it means that the power of the battery this will decrease means battery will deliver less energy per second so the power of the battery decreases because emf of the battery remains same so the main point is here the resistance of this branch increase pd remains same because this is connected with the power supply emf of the power supply is constant so current in this branch will decrease as current in this branch decrease but current in this wire remains same so it means the total current will decrease so this is the total current i naught we can say this is i1 this current we can say this is i2 so we can also write down in this case i naught is equal to i1 plus i2 but i2 in this case decreases this remains same so it means i from the battery decreases but emf of the battery is constant so it means the power of the battery will decrease in this case so let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer so this is how you can write down your answer in your answer you can mention these points you can say current in fixed resistor decreases current in resistance wire is unchanged so current in battery decreases means the total current coming from the battery decreases that emf of the battery is constant so power of the battery decreases a beautiful conceptual question for question number seven part a it is given to us nuclei x and y are different isotopes of the same element Nucleus X is unstable and emits a beta plus particle to form nucleus C. By comparing the number of protons in each nucleus, we need to state and explain whether the charge of nucleus X is less than, is the same as, or greater than the charge of nucleus Y, nucleus C. If you look at nucleus Y and nucleus X, they are isotopes of the same element. As they are the isotopes, it means they have the same number of protons. So they have the same protons, so they have the same charge. So pretty straightforward. So we can say they have the same charge. So we can write down our oh, answer for Y. But if you look at Z, Z is formed when X emit beta plus particle. So this is formed by beta plus decay. Beta plus decay. And also in this case, there will be emission of electron neutrino. 
So let's say atomic number of this one is C, mass number is A. So the mass number of this one will be the same, but atomic number will be Z minus 1. So it simply means that Z has one less proton. This has number of four protons equal to Z, and this one has number of protons equal to Z minus 1. So Z is representing number of protons. So Z has x in this case has more protons so we will say in this case x has more protons and so x has greater charge x has more protons so x will have greater charge so if you have understanding of these points we can write down our final answer so this is how you can write down your final answer in the answer you can mention x has the same number of protons as y so the charge of x is the same as charge of y x has one more proton than z so x has greater charge than z so this is you can see this is also representing number of protons in z so number of protons in z so this has x like this one x has z number of protons z has z minus one number of protons so this has more charge for part B, it is given to us hadrons can be divided into two groups, P and Q. P is baryons. State the name of group Q. So simply, in this case, you need to understand hadrons can be divided into two parts. One we call is mesons and the second one we call is baryons baryons so the name of baryons is given and so q has to be mesons so q has to be mesons and for the second part described in general terms the quark structure of hadrons that belong to group q group q is meson means what is the quark structure of mesons mesons simply they consist of one quark and one antiquark so simply we can say mesons consist of one quark and one antiquark journal structure is asking you quark structure in general terms so we can say antiquark so that's all what you need to write down. So the journal, in general terms, we can say mesons consist of one quark and one antiquark. And the group of the name is mesons. And that's all for this paper. I hope you have better understanding of these concepts. If you have any questions from this paper or from any other paper, you can leave your questions in comments. And I'll be answering as soon as possible. See you in next video. And if you like this video and if you found this video helpful, then please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important.